if your business is not at a place where you have your systems in line, you have your standard operating procedures nailed down, uh, you know exactly what should be done and how to do it. If you're still a little bit in that growth process and you don't always know what you don't know, then a virtual assistant is often not the best first person for you to hire. Hey, welcome to my channel. My name is Christy Yoder, host of the Master Delegator Podcast. The Master Delegator Podcast is for busy and overwhelmed entrepreneurs who want to learn how to become effective in the area of delegation and learn how to hire great virtual assistants to help them scale their business and have more time and freedom. If you are new to this channel, please consider subscribing and don't forget to click the notification bell so you get notified every time I post a new video. All right, let's get started. Hey, in today's podcast episode, I had a chance to talk to Nicole Bandes. After losing her 17-year-old son, Nicole discovered her purpose, encourage others to make time for what matters most. In 2017, Nicole founded Virtual A-Team, a virtual services agency helping overwhelmed coaches and consultants who want to define success by the wealth of their lives, not the size of their bank accounts. Nicole now walks the walk, working less than 20 hours a week, and also hosts the Coaches Co-Pilot, your online business manager podcast. Hey, Nicole, thank you so much for joining me today. I appreciate your time. Thanks so much. I love your show. I've been a longtime listener, so I'm excited to be on the other side of the audience this time. Aw, thank you so much. Um, I know we're going to talk about, you know, a specific topic today, which is about why a virtual assistant may not be your uh, best first hire and what to do instead, you know. So before we uh, dig deeper into that, why don't you tell us about yourself and what you do. Yeah. So I'll try and keep this, I'll try and keep this as short as I can, uh, because, you know, we know that sometimes these podcast introductions get to be very long winded. (laughs) Uh, but I actually, you know, you say in your intro that you're naturally a lazy person and you say that because you always try and um, find the easy way to do things. And you did your assignment. (laughs) <laughs> I told you I I've been a long time listener of the show. <laughs> and and I resonate with that because I consider myself naturally lazy as well, but from the perspective that I'm a chronic migraine sufferer and I have been since I was in junior high. So I've always been trying to find more productive, more efficient ways to do things. And for a good chunk of my life, I studied productivity partly out of a passion, partly out of coaching. And so I became a coach and taught other people how to be more productive. And at the end of the day, the one thing that they said to me over and over again is I just really need to clone myself. I need somebody to do all of this stuff for me. But frankly, I don't have a clue how to do any of it. And I don't want to deal with managing teams of people. So kind of in that weakness moment, I'm like, well, Mm -hmm. maybe I can do this for you. And that's where my company was born. But it's not just out of that need. It's also out of a personal passion because the value of our time is so, so critical to me. And I'm one of those people that I wish that I had a different story, but my husband and I lost one of our sons um, and it's coming up on the nine year anniversary by the time this airs, it might be passed. Um, but you have an opportunity to really evaluate your woulda, coulda, shouldas when you go through an experience like that. And the one thing that I can honestly say is that I didn't have a lot of woulda, coulda, shouldas. I spent my time because I was er- always very conscious of it. I spent my time very wisely with my children. And that doesn't leave me saying, I wish that I'd spent more time with him at baseball, or I wish I was there when he came home from school or any of that stuff. And if I can give that gift to other people, then it, then it brings some meaning to that loss for me personally. Wow. I I mean, sorry to hear about, you know, what happened to your son. I mean, um, that must be really hard, you know, but, but in a way you, you use that 
um, circumstance in a good way, you know, um, you were able to, to find your purpose. Um, would you mind telling, telling us uh, the story about your son, if, if you don't mind, you know, because I know, if, you know, sometimes, sometimes things happen, happen to us and they help us realize what we need to do, you know. So, so tell us about, you know, what happened there. Yeah, yeah, for sure. He, um, he's actually my bonus son, but my husband and I got together when uh, we each had a son. They were three months apart and they were four years old. So I've pretty much been in his life since he was four. So I, I tend not to, not to call him bonus, but um, they were uh, 17 years old and just graduated from high school. Uh, and it was actually on Independence Day, 4th of July, uh, in 2013, and he was coming home from a party. Now, mind you, there was no alcohol, no drugs, or anything like that in his system, but it was late, as it often is on a, on a you know, 4th of July after partying for a long time, and he swerved into, into the other lane, and there was another car. I'm not sure if he bent down, or if he fell asleep, or what the actual you know, what the, why he went into oncoming traffic, but he was in there long enough and he ended up hitting head on another vehicle. Now, fortunately, the other vehicle, there were two people in that vehicle and one of them suffered from a broken leg, but nothing any more serious than that. Um, he was the only fatality in that situation. But I remember getting that phone call at 1130 at night and it was, it was a tough call and, uh, your world really changes. And if I can empower other people to think about how, is it really important for me to be doing these things that somebody else could be doing, or does it matter more that I'm spending time with my family and taking care of my own health and, and doing the things that I can't outsource those things. Only I can do those things. Exactly. And, and those are the things that really matter. Exactly. Well, um, that's very tragic. And, uh, you know, the reason I ask is because, you know, for just us to realize that we need to have a meaningful life together with our loved ones instead of focusing on how much big our bank account is, you know. So thank you. Thank you for sharing that story. Um you know, and I admire you for for getting up, you know, for not, I, I'm sure there were moments where you were like depressed and sad, lonely because you missed your son. But again, I'm sure your son is happy right now that you are encouraging other people to spend more time with their loved ones uh, because of because of what happened. So, so now you are working 20 hours a week, if I'm not mistaken, right? That's and correct. What what made you consistent in working? You know, not more than those you know hours. You know, like how do you protect that time? You know, it, what if somebody? What if what if you're you're supposed to be out at three p.m. and then somebody says, "Hey, I need to have a meeting with you." Blah blah blah. So how how do you make sure that you don't work over those hours? And I'm pretty sure you're not that very strict with that as well. But there's still that you know discipline that we need to protect those um, those time that we have you know for our family. So tell us about how you do that. Yeah, you're right. Um, I'm not, I, I'm not like hardcore on it, but I've done the math many times and there will be weeks where my husband and I go out in our travel trailer and for, you know, four or five weeks at a time, I'm working maybe five hours a week. And then on the weeks that I'm home, I might be working 30 hours a week, but because I'm a chronic migraine sufferer, I have to build my schedule around being able to say, well, I can't work today because the migraine hit. And so therefore I need to be able to have systems and tools in place. If I were doing all the work myself, I wouldn't have any clients left because I'd have no. to constantly mm -hmm. be telling them, sorry, I'm going to miss that deadline because I have a migraine. So it's having clear boundaries and knowing that 
that's the most important thing. Like if you can take nothing else away from this, it's knowing that your boundaries are more important than anything else. When I created my business from day one, I said, I am not going to be the primary person to do all the work. I, I'm going to build this with the intention of knowing that I want to work less than 20 hours a week. How do I do that? And so it's been the goal and the focus from day one. And the way that I do it is just putting systems and tools in place and putting teams in place. Every time I go on a vacation or um, I get called away, um, last year I spent four months in another state because I was taking care of my granddaughter. Uh, and I, I commend the full-time moms out there with small children that are building and growing a business because after not being taken care of a two-year-old for a long period of time, I'm like, how do you find time to do anything in this? Now I know it's possible, but uh, you know that that took up a lot of my time. And that was more important to me than building and growing my business. But I learned a lot of things from that opportunity that I could then say, okay, next time I'm gone for a period of time, these are the things that I want to implement. So like right now I've got a seven week trip or this one's going to be a six week trip coming up at the end of July and wow, August. Um, we're mostly in Colorado, uh, North nice. Rim of the Grand Canyon for a week and then mostly in Colorado. Um, so are you going to be like working while, while traveling or you're going to be be off grid yeah. like for those weeks I, i'm gonna try and be off grid as much as possible this is going to be a test for my team i have one point of contact that's going to be able to reach me but the rest of the team has to go through her and we've built that's these a systems. good experimentation that's so exactly. exciting oh my yeah and they're testing it right now i'm like i'm not available right now so you have to go through jocelyn if you want to get to me and mm -hmm. so they're learning what that looks like and that way we can kind of troubleshoot some of those issues that we may not have anticipated going into that. it. I love that. Well, I'm, I'm glad that, that you're doing that because some, some entrepreneurs, they can't even go on vacation because they, they're afraid that when they go back to work, they don't have anything left anymore, you know, right. because they don't have anybody they trust to, to run the business while they are gone. So in 2017, you started Virtual A Team. How... How did you make sure that it is going to be successful? And I think you kind of uh, mentioned about it a little bit um, um, earlier. You know, you said that when you when you started your business, you know what you want to do. You know how you want it to look like. So in a way, you're kind of like what Stephen Covey um, said in his book, you know, begin with the end in mind. So you right. already know that, okay, I'm going to start a business. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna uh, I'm gonna you know build a team, help with the marketing, whatever, and then after a couple of months, I will only work these certain hours a week. So, how did you make sure that you're gonna be successful? You know, in 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 that area of your business, you know, like you're gonna be successful in in achieving your personal growth and also your your business growth. Well, I gotta say the first thing that uh, that is key and core to me is that I've, I've defined success in a way that's meaningful to me. And that's not necessarily the size of my bank account, um, but it's about the life that I get to live. And if I can wake up every morning or at least most mornings and think, wow, you know what? I've got a pretty good life. You know, the, the, the depression, is, the recession is not hitting me as hard as it's hitting everybody else. The, you know, the downturn in the economy, the gas prices, you know, these things, I can still live a good life and I'm happy and I'm doing the things that fulfill me. That's more important than making that holy grail seven figures and beyond kind of level of business. Uh, so for me, that first step is really defining what success is going to mean for you and not what you think it's supposed to mean because every other guru out there tells you that that's what it's supposed to mean. I uh, love that. Yeah, it's it's being very conscious and and uh, aware of that. And, and from there, 
you know, if I, if I said I did this in, in the first year, I'd be lying. I was still working probably 30, 40 plus hours. No, I've yeah. never been a, I've never been a burn the candle at both ends kind of person again, because of health issues. Um, it just was not in my capacity. So I knew that I had to go slow and steady rather than try and, uh, get to that goal in the first year. Um, so it's been a work in progress, but every year I said, what is my focus this year? What is it that I want to accomplish? And I don't mean revenue goals. I mean, in the creation of this business that runs itself, what is my goal this year? Like after the first year, it was, oh, I got to stop talking to my clients about, I can do that for you. Instead, I have to talk to them about, we can do that for you. Mm -hmm. That was a huge shift. I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> why did I not think of this before? But they always wanted me to do all the work for them. And I'm like, no, 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 no. That's not how this works. I'm not the one doing the work for you. Um, yeah. So that was a big transition. Uh, I bet it was. And I love that you said that. It's really just knowing what you want and knowing when to stop, really. Right? And uh, I mean, all of us individually, we are different. You know, there are some entrepreneurs out there who are okay uh, or content getting like 3K a month or 5K a month. But there are other entrepreneurs out there who would want to have more. And there are entrepreneurs out there who's okay just working alone. They just want to be a solopreneur. They don't want to build an agency. And that's okay. It's just, it's just knowing what you really want, you know, because the more you add to your responsibilities, that means the more you work and the more stress you're going to get, you know? Um, and that's what I have been actually, you know, kind of processing lately. Like, okay, my, my agency is kind of stable right now. Do I want to add more? And if I add more, I know that I'm going to be stressed and overwhelmed at the beginning of it because I'm going to have to build another business, you know? So those are the things I was like, I was thinking and I was like, you know what? Because I'm I'm the kind of person who's like go 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 push push push. If I if I think of an idea, I'll have to do it. You know, I'm that type of person. But now, just like you, I'm learning how to like do things slowly and just be in a steady place. You know, just just um, be mindful and live in the moment and make sure that make sure that I am doing what I'm supposed to do to do. And you know, those are the things that matters to me, you know, my family, my friends, my loved ones, and being able to take a trip as well, you know, going on vacation. Because if I if I do a lot of things, I won't be able to do those things. So I really love what what you shared, you know, just, just let just by looking at you talking about those kind of things. I'm like, this person is, I mean, I know you don't have it all you know, in life, you know, you don't, None have, of us do. we, we don't have all our, what, what do they say? We don't have our, our ducks in a row, you know, we don't have everything figured out and everything, but you, while you're sharing your story and everything, what you're doing right now, you, you look like you're someone who's content and happy, you know, with what you're doing right now. And that's the most important thing, you know, being happy and content with what we have and also be grateful that we're not affected by, the inflation and, you know, gas prices because we work from home. And, you know, I have family members who got laid off um, last week and also this week. And you know that the, infl that the inflation is getting worse when you have somebody close to you affected by it, right? So, um, yeah. so when, they, when they got laid off, I was like, oh, I mean, my business is still pretty stable right now. You know, it's still strong. You know, I, I don't think I'm really going to be affected because if anything, you know, when everything closes, you know, I think my business is still going to be here because we're virtual. You know, right. uh, we provide lower overhead costs as compared to like physical employees and renting, renting like a building or, or an office space. So I think, uh, you, you know, your business and my business and most uh, businesses that are virtual, they're going to stay strong, you know, during this recession. I don't know if I should call it recession already, but it, it's starting to feel like it for some other they're people. They're predicting because it. They, yeah, so. because they, they lost their job, you know. Sometimes you don't really have to announce that there's a recession because you're just going to feel it, right? Yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely. So. Yeah, and I got to tell you, I got um, I actually have a dish towel, and I'll keep this uh, PG rated, but I have a dish towel okay. that says, "Just as soon as I get all my ducks in a row, one of those suckers wanders off." 
Wow. So. <laughs> <laughs> I was, just I was sipping my coffee. Word, but... <laughs> yeah, I was sipping coffee while you're talking about that. And my coffee mug is like holly jolly. So it's everyday Christmas for me. I don't there care if it's I summer it. or winter, but <laughs> it's so funny. Are you sick and tired of being overwhelmed and afraid you'll never scale your business? Meet smart VAs. Unlike many virtual assistant agencies that only assign one dedicated virtual assistant, we provide flexibility for growing businesses by assigning a team of experienced virtual assistants that can do different tasks to support your continuous growth. Visit smartvas.online to book a free discovery call and start growing your business. Let's talk about um, our topic for today, which is why, why do you think, you know, some businesses don't need to hire, you know, a virtual assistant first. Maybe they need to hire, you know, somebody else or a different position. So why do you think a virtual assistant may not be uh, the best first hire for, for a business and what to do instead in that situation? Yeah, you know, this is this is something I'm a little bit passionate about because it seems like every guru uh, and business coach out there says, oh my gosh, you need to have a virtual assistant. Oh my gosh, you need to have a virtual assistant. But they're speaking that from a place further along the evolutionary process than they are and it, business process than they than their clients often are. So if you are, if your business is not at a place where you have your systems in line, you have your standard operating procedures nailed down, uh, you know exactly what should be done and how to do it. If you're still a little bit in that growth process and you don't always know what you don't know, then a virtual assistant is often not the best first person for you to hire uh, because they're going to expect you to know those things. They're going to expect you to give them the standard operating procedures and tell them exactly what to do and how to do it and when to do it. Um, you know, and there's exceptions to the rule. There are some VAs that are uh, really more go-getters and they're going to be more, you know, knowledgeable in these areas. But that's, that is definitely the exception to the rule, I think. Um, so if you're at that place where you're like, I, you know, I, I don't know what I need a VA to do. I don't know how to do half of this stuff on my own already. Then the a better option might be to work with, a virtual business manager or an online business manager, they're sometimes called, these individuals can really help you to put your strategies into place, to build out your standard operating procedures. They're definitely going to be more expensive than your traditional virtual assistant is, but they're doing so much more of the work for you. So you don't have to spend your time learning what you don't know in order to spend the time putting together the standard operating procedure to then give over to a VA. They do that for you. They already have the knowledge. They can put the SOPs in place and then they can work with your VA team as you begin to build it uh, so that they, it, you don't have to do all that stuff. Yeah, I love that. And I totally, totally agree with what you said. You know, uh, before we record this interview, we were just talking about, you know, your services and my services, how we are both providing virtual services online, but in a different way, you know, because you, you help, uh, you know, coaches um, and other entrepreneurs um, who don't have processes and systems in place yet because you have business managers. Whereas my agency, we don't help you with SOPs, you know, and processes and systems and, and everything else. We will execute what you already have. And I, I feel like, you know, you as a business owner, you really have to know what you need, what you already have and what you don't have so that you know what you're going to be needing, you know, when you look for, when you look for um, a virtual assistant or for a virtual provider, you know, and a lot of times really most business owners, they don't really know what they need, what they don't have and what they do have, you know, cause they're just so stressed and overwhelmed. Like their brain space is just very cluttered and 
they just need someone to get it all done. You know? Right. So, and, and they're great at what they do. And it doesn't matter whether they're coaches or, yeah. uh, you know, plumbers or, yeah. I mean, it doesn't matter what your area of expertise is. You're great at what you, you do. That doesn't naturally mean that you're great at building and growing a successful business. And uh, that's what business managers, whether they're virtual or in person, that's what they're good at is helping you to build and grow that business. I love it. We should really talk about partnering together. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> For sure. Uh, all right. So um, how do you delegate to your team? Uh, we use we use a, a project management platform called Teamwork. Uh, oh, it's that's more... the one we use as well. Oh, my love gosh. Love it. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's robust and it's definitely more... Like I've gotten a few clients using it, but it's not generally for the individual business owner. It's much more from an agency approach. It's for an um, agency, yep. Yeah. And so our, you know, our directors are the ones that meet with our clients. Directors are virtual business managers. Their official title is directors of stuff you don't have time to do. Mm-hmm. Um, because we like to have a little fun around here. Uh, you know, they're they're the ones that meet with the clients and go over all of those details of what are your goals? What's your plans? You know, and then they're helping the clients to really figure out, okay, let's prioritize this and that and the other. Um, they're, st- they're strategic. They're not coaches. And I always like to caveat that. Um, they're not going to coach the client, but they certainly come with a high level of expertise in our, our field and they can help guide those clients. And then they work with our team of experts to get the job done because, Clients often don't like dealing with all of the VAs either, the yeah. experts on mm-hmm. the team, you know, um, whether they're overseas or even local, just having to take on that one more component of managing all of these people and make sure that the left hand knows what the right hand is doing. That's yeah. the job of our directors. That is awesome. Well, what do you think is the the important element when it comes to delegation. So you use teamwork and we also use teamwork. Like when you assign a task on teamwork, what do you think are um, the important elements that should be in that? It's uh, clearly it's communication. The more you can provide um, specifics about the task or project that you want to have completed, the better the final results are going to be. So, you know, give ideas, give suggestions, make sure that your explanation of what you're looking for is clear. Um, if you just sort of write something up that's really quick, odds are your your team's going to need to come back and say, what did you mean by that? And that's just going to delay the process and take more time. Um, examples, did I say give examples? Um, you know, make sure that they're clear on, well, this is the kind of thing that I'm looking for. Or the flip side is, look, I don't know what I'm looking for, but I'm going to give you guys responsibility to create something amazing. That's an opportunity too, that's often overlooked. Uh, you know, just say, you know what, I trust you guys to do my social media and here's my voice. And here are my brand colors and here's my logo. Now go at it instead of micromanaging the details. Exactly. And be open to giving feedback to your team. You know, when they, when you give them your brand guideline, your logo and everything they need. And if they uh, get back with you with an output and you don't like that specific output, just be open to telling them, hey, I appreciate that you made this for me, but there are a few things that I notice." um, that that I don't like, you know, just be open to that and be a human being, you know, like don't, yeah. don't, don't fall yell into the tra- at them, don't scream, you know? Right. And don't fall into the trap of fixing it yourself because mm-hmm. all that does is undermines their ability to do the work and you will continue to have to fix things over time. If you take the time up front to go back and say, here's what I didn't like about this And here's kind of a little bit more information. I mean, we get it. Clients don't always know what they're looking for. And so sometimes they need a first or second iteration to get a more concrete idea around that. But if you're not giving those suggestions and ideas over to your team, 
then they're not going to improve over time and you're going to be constantly redoing every task and project and you're both going to get frustrated. Exactly. Yeah, I totally agree. So based on your experience, what do you think is the minimum amount of time for a business owner and a VA or a business manager to to find that groove, you know, to kind of just get to know each other, you know, for, for the VA, for the business manager to, to learn the working style and preferences of your client. So based on your experience, like how, how long does that take? I think it depends a little bit on the tasks that are assigned. Something like content writing often can take a little bit longer to get the, the flow of, I think, but for the most part, I would say one to two months uh, and you know you're starting to understand each other's style. It, it of course depends on how often you're communicating with your team. If you're you know only checking in once a month, it's probably going to take a little bit longer. But I we always recommend that up front, you know those first few weeks especially meet with your team once or twice a week at a minimum so that you're and and do it via Zoom not just email or phone, so you can really understand the vibe and the interaction. How often does your team ask questions? You know, how are you explaining things? What's your management style? All of those things are sort of beginning to, you know, become more clear over the first, you know, four to six weeks, I would say, usually. Yeah, that's that's really good. And do you have any favorite resources or or tools that are helping you to delegate, you know, of course, aside, aside from teamwork, you know, to learn more about delegation or just become a, a great business leader? Uh, well, I listen to a ton of podcasts, including yours. Um, nice. So that's Yay. a great resource. Um, mm-hmm. We have, uh, I have my podcast as well, Coaches Copilot, and that helps nice. specifically coaches and other online based entrepreneurs help to learn how to build and grow their business. Uh, we're big users of LastPass to share your passwords and keep that security in place. We also now use um, PrivNote, P-R-I-V-N-O-T-E, uh, because a lot of the clients are, you know, they don't necessarily want to use LastPass. So in order to share those usernames and passwords securely, we use a system like that. Um, so does and- it work like LastPass? It's, uh, PrivNote is different. It's uh, the the user will open up the website, privnote.com, put their information into a note um, that's on the screen, and that note then generates a URL. The URL is what the client then sends to the team. The team can access it for a predetermined amount of time, usually like 24 hours from the time that they open it, uh, and then it self-destructs. It's no longer available. Nice. Um, so it's a secure site. It's, you know, from everything that I've read, it's completely safe to use. Um, and it ensures that that username and password can't be passed around all over the mm-hmm. universe. And then what our team does is they actually turn around and put it in LastPass. So if we have okay. to share it with cool. other team members, um, we can do so in a more secure way. Nice. And you were about to mention a different thing before I interrupted you. <laughs> I'm uh, sorry I'm if you sure lost your train I was. of thought. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure it was brilliant and it'll come to me after yeah, a minute. <laughs> I'm sure. That's right. Um, all right. Well, this has been really nice, Nicole. Um, where can people find you online? And, you know, just tell us, maybe just pitch a little, a little bit of your services, you know, to, to, to coaches and tell us uh, where they can find you. Yeah, for sure. So again, we specialize in working with coaches and other online-based entrepreneurs, and we help them to delegate smarter uh, by providing that director, that virtual business manager, who then can also work with their entire team. And um, you you can, you can reach me on all of the socials and everywhere else just by going to virtualateam.com, and you can get everything you need from that one place. Yay. Well, thank you so much for your time, Nicole. I appreciate it. Thanks, Christy. I appreciate being on your show.